All right, guys, I wanted to make this short tutorial to go over a few things again to help you with your practice assignment here in Adobe Photoshop. Again, guys, in the new document dialog box, there are, a lot, there are categories up at the top. So you need to know what you're designing and where it's going to be displayed before you pick a category. Since this is an e-learning class and we're just working over the, rep, the web, right now, guys, we're going to choose the web category. Okay. The web category is going to give us some preset sizes of some common sizes of monitors. Okay. For now, we're just going to pick web medium. Guys, I want you to always name your assignments. If you notice, if you do not manually name it yourself, you're letting the computer be in control. And it will name it Untitled 1, Untitled 2, Untitled 3. You're going to have a hard time finding your documents that way. So I'm going to name this Kilborn Practice 1. Okay, it would be really easy for me to find that file. Guys, for this project, you can go portrait or landscape. It's up to you. We'll talk about a lot of this stuff later, but we're just going to go ahead and hit Create to create a new document. Okay. So guys, a couple of things. Uh, always have your layer panel open. So here's your layer panel. If you can't find your layer panel, guys, everything is under window. Okay. If it has a black check, it should be open. If it does not have a black check, it's not open. So I can come down here to layers and open my layer panel. You need to have your layer panel open while you work. Also, guys, your toolbox. Your toolbox defaults to a single column toolbox. I highly suggest you click these little double arrows and you change to a double column box. It's just much easier to get to. All right, guys, first tool, the paint bucket tool. If you do not see the paint bucket, you may see the gradient. Just click and hold this little corner and pick paint bucket. Guys, the paint bucket will use your foreground color. That's this one here on the top. If you want to change it, you can just double click. Okay. When that color panel opens, you just slide your slider to the color family, and then you just pick whatever color you want in here. Okay. Hit OK. That color is now ready to be dumped with your paint bucket. All you have to do is hover over your document and click, and there is your color. Okay. Next tool, guys, type or text, the big T here for type. Now, again, there are some other type tools in here. These mask tools can get confusing, so if I were you, I would just stick with the horizontal type tool for now. Okay. Guys, up here in your control panel is your font, your font size, okay, your alignment, your color. We're going to change that maybe to maybe an orange color. Okay. Boom, boom, boom. Orange and blue are opposite colors or complementary colors. All right. Guys, you also have a character panel. So where do we find our character panel? Again, all panels are found under window. If it does not have a check, it is not open. We now see a check by layers because it's open. So we're going to go up and open the character panel. Guys, you're going to get more choices and more options out of this panel here than you will up here in the control palette. So my suggestion is that you use this here. Okay, I'll collapse that for now. So guys, you just simply click your cursor and you can type your text. Okay, Guys, once you do that, here is your move tool. This top tool in the top left It's the most important tool. That's why they put it in the top left. That's how we can move our items around on the page. Okay. Now that looks kind of cool, but it's kind of flat. So I need to kind of lift it up off the page a little bit. So I'm going to go down here to the bottom of my layer panel and go to my layer styles. It's an FX. So think of like computer effects. I'm going to click on that and I'm going to go to drop shadow. My layer style panel is going to open with all my layer styles, so I could apply more than one layer style at a time. Okay, right now I got drop shadow. Guys, here you can change the color. However, shadows are black, so I would leave it black. Your opacity will make it soft or more intense. The distance will take it further away from the text. Guys, I know some of you are going to want to slide the distance way out here. Don't go to extremes in Photoshop. Okay. Drop shadows are meant to look kind of like this to help that text lift, lift up off the page. Okay. All right. If we want to bring in an image, we just go to another image. The easiest way to get that on our other document is to select all. You can go up to select and choose all. I choose to use the keyboard shortcut of control A. 
you will now see these marching ants around the edge of your document. That means it's selected. Now you can go up to edit copy, or I like to use the shortcut of control C just because it's quicker. Then I can go back to my other master document and I can either edit paste or I like the keyboard shortcut of control V. Why? Because it's faster. Now guys, you'll notice sometimes when you bring in images, they're way bigger than your document. That's fine. Just hit control T for transform. There's a lot of things you can do with transform. You can grab the corner boxes and make it smaller. You can click in the middle and you can move it. Okay, and if you put your cursor outside a corner, notice how that straight double arrow changes to a curved double arrow. Then you can rotate if you like. Guys, anytime you control T or make a transformation, you either have to apply that transformation, commit it, or, or not commit it. How do you do that? You come up here to the check. Guys, again, notice everything in Adobe, if you hover your cursor over it, a balloon will pop up and tell you what it is. Sorry about that, guys. I'm not always going to be there to help you, so make use of your hovering and your balloons, and they will tell you what things are. Guys, you can also hit Enter on the keyboard to commit. Now, again, that looks kind of cool, but it's kind of flat. I need to come down here, and I need to add a little drop shadow to lift it up off the page. Okay. Maybe this time I go up to a stroke. Guys, we call an outline a stroke, all right? You can increase the size, but again, I wouldn't go overboard, just a little outline. Okay, maybe I come down here to my drop shadow and I make the distance a little further so we can see it. I can change the light angle. Guys, experiment, okay? Boom, all right? So guys, I, I copied and pasted an image. I transformed it. I added some layer styles, like drop shadows and strokes. I typed some text with my T tool, right? I used the paint bucket to fill in the background with color. So guys, I hope that helps. Try to keep it simple. Try not to do too much. And hopefully you are learning a little bit each day about Adobe Photoshop.